Efficient workflows are crucial, but difficult to orchestrate. In this video, we'll go through three steps to defining your workflow so you can make it more efficient in Airtable. Before you can build your system in Airtable, it's important to clearly define your workflow, its goal and the steps to get there. Start by defining the goal with this statement. We want to, when we're, so we can. A web agency might say, we want to deliver a project's web assets when a client is under contract so we can maintain client satisfaction. This short sentence captures what you want to do, when you expect to do it, and how you measure success. Take a moment to fill out this sentence for your team. Next, identify the recurring steps you take to achieve your goal. For example, the web agency steps might look like this. Go ahead and identify the recurring steps you take to get to your objective. To act on these steps, you need to have access to the right information. Continue mapping out your workflow by identifying the information you need at each step. For example, as a web agency, the information needed at each step will include project details, teammates involved, asset specs, approvals, and client feedback. In Airtable, all of your information will be organized into tables. These are distinct lists that contain similar information. Distinct lists provide organizational clarity as to where your information will live, and they allow you to make quick connections, identify patterns, and streamline your work. In this case, you can see that a web agency's information falls under three distinct lists, projects, assets, and clients. This will mean you will have three tables when you build your base in Airtable. The information you require for each project, asset, or client will become fields in your tables so you can track all project details, asset status, specs, and client information in one place. We'll cover turning your mapping into tables and fields in the next video. Now your turn to understand the distinct list you need to get things done, your tables. List out the information across the different steps. Organize similar information into lists. Name those lists. Reorganize the detailed information into each list. Orchestrating work doesn't only involve steps and information. It also requires people. And not everyone is involved in every detail of every step. So it's important to know what role each of your stakeholders play when building your system and what information they need. Broadly, stakeholders can be categorized into one of three roles. The first and most common are those who need to collaborate. They want to view, edit, and add information. For example, designers, project managers, and account owners. Second are those who only want to oversee your work. They want to view information, but not add or edit. Maybe like a sales manager. Third are input stakeholders. They want to submit information, such as a client putting in a request or giving feedback, but do not need further insights into the actual work. Understanding the role that each of your stakeholders play will become crucial in building out your system. Collaborate stakeholders will require full access. Overview stakeholders will need view share links and input stakeholders will get access to connected forms. Try mapping your own stakeholders across each of your steps into collaborate, overview, or input groups. You can reference these later when deciding which level of information to share with each person. Great work. You've taken the three steps in understanding your workflow to migrate it to Airtable. In the next video of this series, you'll reference your workflow map, its steps, the information required and your stakeholders' roles and turn it into an Airtable base where you can better orchestrate your work.